I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. Just click on the link in the description below or go to my website, AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're going to be talking about toxic relationships. Sounds terrible. It does. Um, many of us have found ourselves in a toxic relationship at one point or another in our life. And a lot of times we wind up staying in a relationship like that because that's what we grew up in. And that's the kind of environment we had as a child. So it feels very familiar to us. And it could be really hard to walk away from those kind of situations. Even though they're destructive. Yes. Why don't you talk about what is a toxic relationship? A toxic relationship is thought of a relationship that damages um, at least one person of two people who have a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, it's often destructive to the other two but there's usually an aggressor and a victim. Um, for example, just a recent case we had, um, someone contacted us to say that her boyfriend um, has very angry outbursts, very unpredictably, so that she walks around on eggshells, those eggshells can't get rid of them, all of the time, trying to keep him from going off. And that keeps her anxious, not sleeping well, and blaming herself for his outbursts. Mm -hmm. That's pretty toxic because she feels like it's all her mm -hmm. fault. He, on the other hand, has gained an awful lot of power here that he can make her do whatever he wants if he looks like he's going to go off. So it's not really good for him mm -hmm. either because that's not a good way to relate. No, right? no, of course. Because you're not going to really have a good relationship with that person. Right. You're not going to be able right. to be present with them where they're going to be they're not going to feel yeah. safe, so they want to be present with you, right. and you're not going to have that full experience. But you will be in control. Yeah. yeah. If, yeah. For <laughs> as long as she'll tolerate you. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we often come across a lot of toxic relationships, and sometimes we don't even realize it until you're maybe sitting here watching some of these videos thinking, wow, this is like my relationship. Or maybe, yeah. maybe you're even thinking, I was toxic. Well, that would be terrible. But yes, sure. Yeah. Sure. Was I destructive to this person? I, I, didn't I have a lot yeah. of people that come sure. to me and they're like, oh my gosh, I was a terrible partner. I didn't listen. I used to argue at them. I right. used to yell at them and scream at them yeah. or, or, or hang up the phone on them or throw the phone. I was toxic. They feel that guilt and that remorse. That's right. And how many toxic bosses have we all seen or had? And that, that affects a number of people. Not so funny. No. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but, you know, I do get a lot of people who, once they start watching all the videos, they start to see more and more the behavior they've done that caused the destruction of the relationship. And they have terrible guilt. Of course. Yes. And they're like, I want to change. I want to fix this. I can't tell you how many guys recently have had a bunch of guys that have really said, I mean, Craig, I was such a jerk. And... Believe me, they did some pretty bad things. They really were. Well, they good really for them were. To realize you know, verbally abusive. Yeah. I mean, I, I can think of one person that I talked with recently that he felt terrible because he was with in the car with his girlfriend and her sister and boyfriend and her mother and father, and so her sister's boyfriend looks at her and says, I have the most beautiful woman in the world. And then the father says to the wife, I have the most beautiful woman in the world, like kind of playfully. And then he just sits there quietly. And doesn't say a word. And doesn't say a word. And then later on, she's like, why didn't you say anything? And he goes, because you're not the most beautiful woman in the world. Oh, please. So she must be hurt and... And that story. was just yeah. one of the things. There was a bunch oh, of different yeah. things. And he feels really bad. And he's to he the... He feels bad. What got him to that point, do you know? Did because he, because he's realized how hurtful he's been. Okay. 
Uh, he's, he's been watching tons of my videos. And he's like, you know what? I am so stupid. This girl was so good to me. And I was terrible to her. I was mean to her all the time. He would tell his co-workers what they did sexually. And he would, yeah, openly brag about things he did with her. And they worked together. Oh, my Lord. Oh, he was pretty toxic. Okay. Yeah. And so now he's like, what have I done? Well, I don't... He's taken the first step. He's owning his behavior. He is yeah. owning Good his behavior. We've yeah. done two Skypes together. I'm Good sure we'll him. do yeah. more soon. But he, I mean, he's so remorseful. He, he was telling me that he prays constantly. He's like, please just give me one more chance with this woman. I will treat her like the woman that I needed, you know, that she needs to be treated. He's got terrible remorse and he's really working on himself. Um, so I do feel bad, but he knows he kind of brought it upon himself because he did a lot of those things. Those are just two examples that I think show, mm -hmm. you know, but he's trying to turn over a new leaf and he's <laughs> been working hard. Yeah. So, and I do think that she still loves this guy. And I, I mean, there's another guy that I can think of that uh, I've done two Skypes with as well, who was doing some really terrible behavior where he was just going out with his friends constantly. He would leave her alone all the time. She wanted him to go to her best friend's wedding. And he's like, I don't want to go to that. And he's like, and he wanted to go do something like play tennis or basketball or something like that instead. And she was like, that's it. I'm done. I, you've been doing this to me for years. And you don't care about me. You only want to go out with your friends and party all the time. And, you know, he would say really mean and hurtful things too. So these guys are, are really getting an awareness by watching this You stuff. also wonder what they saw between their parents. And I can think of a similar case um, with a man who worked for me. Um, and he, his girlfriend broke up with him and he was devastated. And he said, I didn't think she minded when I break a dinner date with her to go fishing with my friends. I, how, how was I supposed to know she minded? How could you think she didn't mind? You know? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I know what you're saying. So, you know, a lot of the videos are helping teach you guys about appropriate ways to treat your partner. And not just, it's not just about trying to get somebody back. Because if you don't heal yourself and work through these issues, right. they'll come up again. And the relationship's just going to end for good. So the more work you do on yourself, the better off you're going to be in Absolutely. getting them back. Absolutely. Otherwise, the problem comes back. And believe me, when I tell you, many of you guys have aha moments in our Skypes together where you're seeing things or hearing things for the first time. When I piece it together with you, it's incredible. The I'm work. sure. Yeah. So today's email, this is a good one, um, from a woman who's in her mid-30s. Now, she was dating a guy that was mm, 23 years younger. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me say that again. She was dating a guy that was almost 15 years younger. So there's a big age gap there. Um, and well, there's a lot more to it than just the age gap. So she's mid thirties, he's early thirties, okay? And so she said that they met at a nightclub in 2015 and they dated for nearly two years. They lived together on and off for several months, almost on a daily basis, like captivity. Captivity? She's okay. saying it was like captivity? <laughs> yeah. I don't think English is her first language. Oh, okay. ever. Uh, whenever he could sneak, sneak me into his bedroom at night, unnoticed by his older brother, who was usually away. My ex and I had an extra live-in couple morning time together until lunch before we went off to work. So here we have this woman in her mid-30s sneaking into this guy's place when the brother or the family is not around. Oh my doesn't sound very healthy, right? It almost sounds like she's acting like a teenager. I was going to say, it sounds like a teenage thing to do. Yeah. Okay, so she was telling me about his background. Uh, as far as his family, she said, as a child, his parents divorced and are remarried separately. His father moved to another country with his second wife and their other son. 
My ex lived with his older brother and mother while growing up, then went separate ways. My ex recently moved into his own place on a street full of bars and nightclubs at the time of our breakup, five minutes from our home, and also his mother and stepfather. So he's still living with the mother, the stepfather, and the brother. And the brother, okay. He has a consuming secret obsession with older women, especially MILFs. What was it? <laughs> uh, MILFs is a uh, term for mom I'd like to... Get it. <laughs> get it. Hadn't heard it before, but get it. <laughs> he probably had a history of uncontrollable violent anger due to his anxious er, attachment slash separation anxiety. As a teenager, he lashed out and hit his mother during an argument. Oh my God. This doesn't sound like an anxious attachment. No, though. it doesn't. It sounds a lot more serious than that. Okay, it's going to get worse. Okay. Maybe he blamed himself when his mother moved out to live with his stepfather. My ex also hinted he did something unforgivable to his previous girlfriend, a married woman in her 40s, oh my. that ended the affair. Possibly he hit her too. Oh my. Mm hmm. She needs to know what he did. Well, whether she knows or not specifically what he did. He sounds potentially dangerous to me. This definitely sounds like does a toxic it, relationship. Does it, does it sound dangerous to oh, you? Oh, absolutely. Yes, all, all my red flags. I mean, he, I mean, he's telling her I've done something unforgivable to a previous girlfriend who was married, by the way. These are major, oh, major, major, issues. major issues. This has nothing to do with an anxious attachment style. No. He's gotten physically aggressive with his mother. And done something unforgivable to another girlfriend. Of course, I would immediately want to know what his relationship was with his mother. Um, but we're not in a position to ask those questions. Although I think we could guess. But I think, I think he sounded dangerous. I do too. Okay. He criticized that I should have never come home. Or Let me start that again. Okay. Because I don't want to say that country. He criticized that I should have never come to that country to work in a subpar job and should have been cherishing every year that I have left with my parents in the country I'm in before it's too late. It's a, I don't want to say the country. She asked me to keep that part anonymous. Okay. So she thinks he should live out the rest of his life not with a partner but with his family. No. He thinks that she should, should be living with her parents to cherish that. Okay. Because he lost his fairly early on. I get that. Okay. He's hung up on not having that proper chance while growing up. Now he'll do anything to repair the bond with his parents. Fear of abandonment again. Okay. His parents don't talk to him? I think he lives with his mom and stepfather. And the brother. God. Okay. She was talking about the two biggest problems between them. She said, trust and underappreciated. He's caring, like buying my attention with kind gestures and prefixed everything he said to me with wifey. I felt like a guardian angel, but rarely reciprocate with hubby because he's also two-faced. So she called him hubby, he got upset? I don't know. I think she, it sounds like she's angry to me, so she didn't want to call him hubby because she was, right? Oh, here, we got some more here. He flirted and hooked up with other women on his phone after I already addressed the issue. Oh, my. When we argued, my avoidant tendencies made me threaten breakup or to go clubbing. Every time I walk away, he would pursue, restrict, beg, cry, mutter angrily at himself, threaten suicide, break oh, things, lash out with verbal or physical abuse until I stayed with him. 
Oh my lord. And some of those are very infantile behavior. Talk about that. Well, um, if you think of a desperate child, um, particularly if they're angry at mom already, if mom starts to leave, they'll become desperate and do all sorts of crazy things. Children don't threaten suicide, but they feel like they might die, as we've talked about before, mm -hmm. if they're without mother. So he would, he would kick up a storm. He'd have a tantrum, essentially, for her to stay. Yeah. But he got physically and verbally abusive as well. Wow. He admitted to low emotional quotient. I don't, I guess... Low emotional quotient. Maybe she means self-esteem. Yeah. Or control. I'm not sure which one she means. But maybe it's bipolar disorder, she's asking. Well, there's a possibility. But the other thing... He may have bipolar disorder, but he has other things as well. Yeah. Yeah. She says, it's like walking on eggshells as he struggled with work, study, low income, and quitting gambling, drinking, and smoking. Oh, this poor guy. He's done everything imaginable. I helped him a lot on his studies, work life, and housework. I let him browse my phone, daily diary, and an angry story, all documenting his daily spending and behavior towards me which made him feel like a worthless loser and pathetic failure. So I guess she has some kind of daily diary yeah. and she let him read it and that's how he felt afterwards. He saw that I br talked briefly about our relationship to other guys, including, I hope our relationship ends soon, because I felt so desperately smothered at the time. Mm -hmm. Then he gave me ten signs he lost interest. <laughs> That's a new one. Yeah. Here are the top ten signs I've lost interest. Okay, I can't wait to hear them. I don't know if we're going to get them, but I think we get some. Uh, okay, here were his initial reasons. We're just incompatible. Too big of a difference. Emphasizing his young age as if he, as he, he wanted some freedom. And at my age, I should marry someone better. He didn't want to harm me. Tie me down nor remain invested in me, he couldn't give what I wanted. Him being too clingy or busy with work and family obligations, no time to be dating or commit to a relationship. His family kept tabs on him at the new home and daily spending so that he's focused for entry to police training. So we have a lot of reasons there. Oh my Lord, that is the last place we need him. Yeah. Oh my Lord. He could be um, bipolar, um, you know, and the spending would speak to that. But he sounds extremely confused around relationships of any kind and seems to equate being ab abandoned with his becoming angry. Mm -hmm. He's scary. Yep. Okay. Now she says these are his real reasons. This is three weeks after the breakup. He's seeing a new girl of his age. Probably lined her up for a while. Casually texted her in my presence, saying he needed to show her care. He also brushed her off as a dimwit with explosive temper. She had an explosive yeah, temper? Yeah, that's what he's saying about the new girl. Well, heavens. Then admits I'm better than her in bed and as a caregiver. A caregiver? And in bed. Yeah. What are your thoughts? He did, she, uh, we don't know who we want here, mother or a partner. And mm -hmm. I think we have them confused, which is extremely dangerous. Yeah. Yeah? Um, well, your mother is not your sexual partner and can't be. And I truly wonder what happened in his home when he was little. Um, because he seems to be enraged at women and ready to be violent toward them. Mm -hmm. But still is terrified if he thinks one's going to leave him. Wow. Okay. Okay. A uh, little bit more here. He wanted to bring a girlfriend of similar age to meet his mother. It's like he was ashamed to be seen with me. He still hung up on what I wrote about him in that blog. Okay. What did she write about him? Remember that, you know, I hope that it ends soon. Oh, yeah, because, yeah. yeah. Her reactions were shock, speechless, devastated, Grief, denial, regret, betrayed, and anger. 
He thought that it was a happy ending I wanted all along. I felt powerless to plead and dispute this. I said that we can't stay friends. We texted a few times after the breakup to attempt to exchange belongings. Three weeks post-breakup, on our would-be two-year anniversary, when I returned his things, I asked him about our intimate photos, and he immediately deleted them on his phone. But he may have them backed up elsewhere. I bet he does. I bet he does, too. Uh, he didn't do any kind of holiday reach-out. Yesterday, I looked back at his text and missed call, uh, and she... She dialed him by accident, and she says, really? Uh, she has n had no contact or follow-up otherwise. What can I do about his anxiety over family and our age gap to get him back? Oh, I want to say, please, madam, you do not want this man back. He's very confused, he's very damaged, and he's dangerous. Um, it's like he has care t mother type caretaking somehow eroticized and if he gets enraged it could be very dangerous yeah and, and you know what I told her is that there are so many more issues going on oh, here than an age gap because yeah. she's concerned hey can I, how do I get him to change his mind about the age difference? No, that's not what you want. No, this has nothing to do with the age no, difference. nothing. Even if he's giving it to you as an excuse. I mean, this guy has got major issues. He's violent towards his mother. He did something unforgivable, to those are your words, to his, girlfriend. To his other, to the other girl he dated who was married. Yeah. Um, he's become physically and verbally abusive to you, those were your words. Um, who knows what he did? You didn't elaborate on that. We don't know what he did sexually. I'd be worried. Mm -hmm. um, he has major issues going on here. I don't think he can even trust himself. And he want, well, and I think that's why he wants to be a policeman. That may sound strange, but um, there are men who want to be policemen because they think somehow it will provide external limits and keep their behavior in the realm of the reasonable. And that probably doesn't work too well. Of course not. And eventually they get into trouble with being violent with somebody they've arrested or some such thing. Mm -hmm. he, he is very close to out of control. Yeah. Um, I don't know how she did two years with this guy. I don't guy. know how he did, she did it either. I mean, it's almost like she's reenacting some kind of early trauma or something as right. well. Yep. Maybe where when she was a teenager she hooked up with some guys and maybe they forced themselves. I don't know. Something. The sneaking into the home right. seems very adolescent. Yep. I mean, come on, you're in your mid-30s and you're sneaking into... Well, I think they're both really quite developmentally arrested at various stages. His is very early. And the earlier it is, the more dangerous it is. Yeah. Um, I just can't recommend Oh, for this no. woman to pursue this in any way. I mean, this may be painful to tell her, but um, there's no way to fix this, I don't think. And she probably has no idea that he's dangerous to her, but I think we would have to say it. I think he's dangerous, too. He's shown a history of it. Oh, it yes. wasn't one isolated no. incident. I mean, he's violent towards his mother and at least one other woman. I'm sure there's a lot of other things that you don't know. Oh, I'm sure there are. And he's gambled, and he's spent money on a daily basis, and he's done this, and he's done that. And he's got, he's given, we talked about addictions earlier today, um, but he's done everything on earth to try to find ways to soothe himself, calm himself down, and get himself under control. And none of them have worked. He has obviously not looked for help or said to anybody, I'm a real mess, and I need to do something. It doesn't sound like that. And this poor woman is blaming herself. Yeah. She thinks that, you know, it has something to do with this age because he's told her that. But he gave her a list of like 10 things. I think we had probably most of them there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if you're not emotionally healthy or able to do a relationship, you can't force it to happen. No. You can't force this person to, to have a healthy relationship with you. It doesn't you. sound like he works either, does it? She said he was dealing with terribly low income. 
I don't know. I, I don't think she said either way about the work situation. But his parents were monitoring him so he could get into the police department. Well, it seemed like they were monitoring his money and his spending habits because he was gambling everything. Yeah. So, um, he probably had massive amounts of trauma in the early childhood. I would guess so. And it's probably a lot worse than we could even imagine. Unfortunately, with trauma, what you hear in the beginning is not an exaggeration. It's usually the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. So, this is a definite toxic relationship that's not healthy for you, and you don't want to put yourself in a dangerous situation. situation. Yeah. And you are. Yes, I think she is too. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't think of many times where we've twice, ever said anything only like twice, this. Twice, I think, in, in the time we've worked together. Yeah, I think this might be the only the second one. Yeah. But yeah. pattern of aggressive behavior, um, and to, to say that it was unforgivable Whatever with he what did. he did to the other woman, I can't even imagine what that could be, but it and sounds... she didn't ask? I don't know. It doesn't sound like she did because she was worried about eggshells because he would go off. So, you know, he probably kept her from asking. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, it would scare me. It does scare me. And I worked in the prison. It double scares me. You put yourself in a toxic, unhealthy relationship just to be with somebody. Long term, it's not going to last anyway. But potentially, you're putting yourself at risk here or your children. And Margaret has seen that kind of violence firsthand. Yes, I have. I worked in the prison system for several years. I learned many, many things there. And one of the things I learned is with somebody like this, the woman can't do anything with him. If she tries to set limits with him, that will feel good to him briefly, and then he'll get mad that she's telling him what to do. And if she just goes around tippy-toeing so she won't set him off, she's going to continue to blame herself for his behavior. His track record with women is terrible, and I don't think she's safe, and my advice to her would be to get as far away from him as she can. Yeah, and I would also get yourself some individual therapy yes. because obviously you have a lot of issues going on that you would even put yourself in this yes. situation. and that you would think it was your fault that you were in it. Yes. And she clearly seems to say that, so save yourself, please. Yeah, yeah. you have to always keep yourself safe. Yeah. You cannot risk your own self, your own mental health, your own safety at just to be with somebody. That's way too high a cost. Absolutely. I mean, the world tells us if we're not part of a couple, there's something wrong with us. I mean, you see it on TV all of the time. Listen to TMZ or any of those things, and it's all about the happy couples. But it's perfectly all right to be alone for a while or for as long as works for you. It's okay. Yeah. Okay, so really tough situation. Oh. But I hope that this woman moves past this one. It's very rare that I say you've got to move on right. definitely. Very rare, yeah. But this is one of those cases where, based on what I'm reading, you got to get out and you got to put yourself and your safety first. Right. Okay, so if you want to get my help personally, just go to my website, askcraig.net, sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching, I do Skype coaching. And if you got to get with me right away, I do offer emergency Skype coaching. Take a look on the website for Margaret as well. She's going to be do, doing Skype coaching too. All right. I look forward to speaking with you. Uh, that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon.